and welcome to a crossword edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we are actually taking on a cryptic crossword. Now, um, this recommendation came from June Park, who is an incredibly notable um, American crossword puzzle uh, solver. He always finishes in the top 10 of the uh, ACPT. He is a brilliant constructor of puzzles and um, he's an assiduous blogger as well. I read him every week writing about the Matt Gaffney puzzle, which I've occasionally recommended on the channel. So um, as soon as June writes to us for the first time ever to recommend that we look at a puzzle from his outside the box um, subscription blog, um, I'm going to pay attention, frankly, and we're going to have a go at it. This puzzle is by Will Nediger, a Canadian, and um, June says that he and his subscribers were in awe of it. So we're going to have a go here on Cracking the Cryptic and see see how we get on and see what we make of it. I mean, I'm quite excited to see what we get here. So um, I've created the grid in my in the sympathy software I like to use. So I'm just going to fit that in over the top so I can play the puzzle effectively online and do I mean I can't offer you more than a print of the puzzle so that's all that we'll be providing a link to I'm afraid um, but that should still be fun so let's get cracking let's have a look at one across dressers and diaper strugglers at first well um, at first is the kind of crossword technology I'm focusing on there I know this is clever because um, if we look at the first letters of dressers and diaper strugglers, what the clue's saying is take that phrase, um, dressers or take that word string and look at it at first. So what are those words at first? They are D-A-D-S, which spells dads. And you can see that is kind of defined by dressers and diaper strugglers at first, because those are some of the first tasks that dads have to grapple with, as I remember very well. So dads is the answer. Now, the clever thing about this clue is it's an and lit, which means, oh, I shouldn't have done that, sorry, which means that uh, as well as the um, whole clue, well, the whole clue acts both as the definition, dressers and diaper strugglers at first, and as the, the whole word play, D-A-D-S, from dressers and diaper strugglers at first. So that's neat. Let's have a look at one down. Opposite of wants to see more of. Um, doesn't. We've got a D at the beginning. We've got question mark, exclamation mark at the end. I've not seen that often. Um, opposite of wants to see more of. No, I don't know. Let's have a look at two down. Style guard, exclamation mark. There's a lot of exclamation marks in this puzzle. What does that mean? No, I don't know again. Okay, let's go back to three across then, since I couldn't use either of the letters I got there. Principally African snakes, extremely poisonous. Okay, well, principally, just like at first, actually, means look at the first letter of one or, one or more words. And we've got African snakes giving us A-S. Then extremely means look at poisonous only in an extreme fashion, so only the extreme letters, P and S. And then when you put that together with the AS, you get ASPS. Now this wordplay could equally, principally could have referred to A-S-E-P because that was the first letters of all four words, but that doesn't make a word. So you sometimes have to just work till you find something that does work. Now again, this is an and lit. It's very pretty because the whole clue, principally African snakes, extremely poisonous. I think that's very precise because some asps are in Asia, but most are in Africa. So that's incredibly accurate zoologically, I believe. And extremely poisonous probably is too. They're certainly poisonous. We know that one stung Cleopatra to death. Um, so it's another and lit. And you're beginning to get the idea in this puzzle, I think. Let's have a look at six across. He's the originator of Siddhartha and of Emil. So the originator of Siddhartha looks like the letter S, the first clue, but and of Emil. I have a feeling this is referring to some 
literary knowledge that I don't have. Is Siddhartha is something in obviously, well, I say obviously, in a subcontinental Asian religion. Could be Buddhism or Hindu, I don't know. Right, that didn't help. So let's have a look at the S we got from four down. Her ecstasy's seen in a Baroque statue without urethane coating. Her ecstasy's seen in a Baroque statue without urethane coating. Urethane coating looks like the letters U and E because they coat that word. So you can take them out of statue and you get stat. Her ecstasies. Sh yeah, maybe we put something into stat. Saint, that could begin with then. Saint, oh, Saint Teresa. So Baroque can be a, an anagram indicator because it means convoluted. Um, so STTA is what you could get from Baroque from statue in a Baroque fashion without U-E, and her E, E apostrophe S, E is an abbreviation for ecstasy, the drug, so I think that gives us Saint Teresa, and again, it's an and lit, and I think we really may be on the trail of a crossword that is all and lits. Um, the whole definition there, it refers to a statue that I'm not going to claim I know. Um, I bet you there is a statue, a Baroque potentially statue of St. Teresa in her ecstasy, but I don't know that. Anyway, five down. For example, turn down offensively nasty overtures. Um, offensively nasty overtures. Overtures meaning the beginning of say no looks like, for example, turn down. Yes, I mean, again, it works as a definition for the whole clue. Sorry, the, the whole clue works as a definition for say no, because you could be, if you say no, you could be turning down offensively nasty overtures. Um, but also, say can mean, for example, and if you turn around the beginnings of offensively and nasty, which are O-N, you get N-O, so that's say no. Let's have a look at 10 across, which ends in T something Y. Light, spry, active, brilliant. This is an anagram of light, spry, and active is the anagram indicator, but again, the whole clue is defining the word sprightly. That is so neat. I mean, that is a word that is begging for that clue, and Will has managed to find it, which is... It's almost like discovery rather than invention, but as always, genius is 99% perspiration. Now, 12 across, genuine sort. Okay, if you sort out the letters of genuine, you get Anjanu, who is somebody who is too, um, too, uh, disingen too ingenuous to be um, deceptive. So they are a genuine sort. Brilliant again. Now, what was one down again? Opposite of wants to see more of. Dislikes? Doesn't work. Style guard? Oh, um, so it's an anagram. So, well, it has to be an anagram of guard. You're styling the letters of guard. And I'm aware of a do-rag spelled D-O, maybe hyphen R-A-G, but it must have a variant D-U-R-A-G, which is um, a kind of headband, which could be a form of guard, a, a bandana sort of thing, isn't it? I'm showing my ignorance of uh, mainly American culture there. Nine down. A guy like Roger Moore's Bond. Brilliant. Agent. Agent works perfectly both ways. Isn't that neat? I mean, you just have to admire this stuff. 13 across. I mean, we're clearly looking at a puzzle that is all and lit clues. And I mean, they're magic. These, you know, if you see one in a regular crossword, it's a surprise and it gives you a little buzz. But here we're getting one every time. City around Loire's banks, east of Tours. Well, I think that's Orléans because it's got the letters L and E from the banks of Loire. Um, Oran is a city. I mean, that's a city in Algeria, but if you put that city around 
L-E, and the eastern letter of Tours, which is S, you get Orléans, which is no doubt a city on the Loire east of Tours. Um, brilliant, again. Let's keep going. 16 has got an E in second place. Sentinel, e.g. in a thesaurus. Um, sentry is a sentinel. Uh, so, we'll, I mean, the, the definition, I think, is just telling us to look for a synonym for sentinel. But I don't... Oh, e.g. We could should put the word e.g. in something that could be a thesaurus. So, book or tome or... Ref, Ooh, I don't know. Let's have a look at six down. It's got an L in it. High region of Asia once. Himalaya? Oh, yes. High is H-I, which is a kind of abbreviation in things like high res and hi-fi. And then Malaya was once a region of Asia. So Himalaya is a high region of Asia once. Again, that is magical. Again, another word that's crying out for that treatment. Will's found it. He's fitted it into this puzzle. Brilliant clue. Um, 11 across. Subject for people interested in the history of German economics, I hear. Crikey, that's a long clue. Um, what would be a subject for people his interested? <laughs> I don't know what we're looking at there. Let's have a look at six across with an H. Oh, he's... Ah, ah, yes, Hess. Um, I think this is... I don't want to get the name wrong. Yes, Herman Hess. I think he's a writer. And I think he did write Siddhartha. So although it's about Eastern Asian religion in some way, it's by a German author. Now, seven down, beginning with an S. Men simultaneously topless and bottomless starkers running around. Oh, well, I'm impressed. That seems like very English slang to me, but that's brilliant. Um, men simultaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This men. If you take the word men and remove its top and its bottom, which are M and N, effectively, you just get E. But if that's running around with the letters of starkers, you get streakers, who are men who are simultaneously topless and bottomless, running around. Isn't that excellent? Eight down. I mean, I must somehow have come across the near anagram of starkers and streakers before, because they're so amusing. But I didn't remember it. Anyway, eight down. Ends gets, ri gets rid of initial challenges. Hmm. Ends. Uh, eases. If you get rid of initial challenges, you ease the path. Ceases gets rid of its of the initial letter of challenges, which is C. That's nice. I mean, it's always clever in a crossword clue as well, just in wordplay in general, if the sound changes when you make the change to the word. So cease has a voiceless S and ease has a voiced Z kind of sound. 11 across, subject for people interested in the history of German economics, I hear. Crumbs, is that? Oh, Marx, because he was a German economist. Was he mainly an economist? He probably was. A philosopher, I might have said. Why would, oh yes, Marx, of course. Oh, that's brilliant, because the German currency was Marx, so the history of German economics. I was wondering about mores, which would have fitted, but uh, Marx is brilliant, works as a and lit, as we were expecting. Ah, Sentinel E.G. in a thesaurus is an S entry, so my original thought of Sentry was right. That's brilliant. An S entry in a thesaurus is Sentinel. I mean, that's so clever, and of course, sent if you looked up Sentinel in a thesaurus, you'll see Sentry. That's guaranteed. 18 across, hearing part. Well, the ear is a hearing part. I mean, that's been noted before in crossword clues, but really neatly expressed. 17 down, things Girl Scout heads out with. Big money makers. Well, there's different meanings of money makers. Um, things Girl Scout. Not sure. Let's try 19 down. 
created the essential parts of events anew. So I think this is an anagram of created and en, which are the central, the essential, the middle parts of events. If you do them anew, you get re enacted. That's what you get, which is to create the essential parts of events in a different way. Now, 23 across. It can be found in the middle of Pacific, looks like Isle, a bit of land end surrounded by endless sea. So, what can be found in the middle of Pacific, the letter I, a bit of land is the letter L, surrounded by the, um, the word C endlessly, S-E, and that gives you Isle, which def is defined fully in that clue. Um, 27 across. Metropolitan area primarily near water, where they speak Spanish, containing Nicaragua's capital. So, luckily I know the capital of Nicaragua, which is Managua, and that has got the Spanish for water, agua, in it. MA from metropolitan area primarily, just as we had with principally and at first. Water, where they speak Spanish, containing the capital letter of Nicaragua, which is N, gives you Managua, which is a metropolitan area primarily near water, where they speak Spanish and containing Ni Nicaragua's capital. Brilliant. 24 down. Bottom part of shank, well that's K, connected to one end of heel, and one end of bridge. Um, surely this is K connected to. Mm, I don't know. Okay, let's try 28 down. I mean, one end of heel looks like H or L. One end of bridge looks like B or E, but I don't know how to put those together and where the other two letters come from. 28 down. Gully chasm hybrid. Gorge would be a gully or chasm, maybe a hybrid of the two. Why is that amusing? Not sure. Might not be gorge. Let's have a look at 33 across. Fish a diner consumes. Shad there, so S-H-A-D. Now you might, something that um, okay, the, just to explain the word play, it's the, sh the word shad is hidden in fish a diner, and shad is a fish you can eat, so it's a fish a diner consumes. Just to wonder about the, the exclamation marks, I think they often mark um, ideas that have really worked. That's how a lot of compilers use these, so I think that's what they're doing in all these clues. Um, and fair enough, I guess, in, in this puzzle, because some of these are so brilliant. So it is not a gorge, it's a gulch. Now that's a word we don't use much in Britain, so um, maybe that's why it didn't come to me immediately, but I certainly know it. And it's a hybrid of the words gully and chasm, because it's using the, fur, the beginnings of both words very neatly. Now, 30 across. Like some dinners reportedly leading to words in the language of love, meaning the bed. Well, lit, L-I-T, is the French for bed, and I suppose French is the language of love. So this is candle lit, which is like some dinners reportedly leading to words in the language of love. But why? Why candle? Um, I'm thinking about the word play now. Like some dinners might not be candlelit, they might be lit by something else, but candle, is that like some dinners reportedly? I don't know, don't know quite what's going on there, Let, it might be, it's some sort of lit. 17 down, oh that's these things Girl Scout heads out with, big money makers, so I was expecting this to be an anagram, but M has surprised me there. Don't know what we're looking at there. So, 22 across, the last one of the ones I've got letters for. One third of three friends in a French novel. Ooh. Oh, Aramis, he's one of the three musketeers and they were friends. How does that work? Ami is friends in French. One is A, the third letter of three is R, and friends in a French novel would be 
uh, printed as ami, plural. Brilliant. 17 down. Things Girl Scout heads out with big money makers. Oh, well, this is something I probably need to know that Girl Scouts would sell, and we don't really do that here. So I've kind of seen Girl Scouts selling baked goods and things. Tail for money makers. Oh, I don't know what this is. Irritating. Right, 20 down. We've got an A in it now. Graph beginning with a rising arc with the second half going in the opposite direction. Um, graph beginning, I suppose, could be G with A. G, A. Oh no, how about parabola? That's kind of a graph with a rising arc. And a lob. Um, graph beginning. Para. So para is a beginning for the word paragraph. So it could be a beginning of graph. You'd more see that in an American crosser than a British one, but that's okay, I think. And then a lob rising is the rising arc with the second half of this word going in the opposite direction. Presumably that's some sort of acceptable mathematic definition of parabola, although the full question mark, exclamation mark, maybe suggests it's generous. 31. A foreign language greeting that gets returned. That is going to be aloha from the Hawaiian. That's perfectly defined in the clue. And a hula, which is Portuguese, I think, for hello, is getting returned backwards. Brilliant. 25 down. Inky pigment could be sepia. Primarily turning up in the origins of some early art. Yes, the first letters of inky pigment are IP. If they're turning up, PI, in the origins, again, the first letters of some early art, we get sepia, which is an old tint. Now, 29 across split second snapshot of content. So I think this is photo snapshot of content. Mm, I'm a bit worried. Oh, if you have second, the letter S, split out of snapshot of, you get snap hot of, and its content is photo. That's, that's very clever, but surprising. 25 across. Alternately, super wide magazine features. So the alternate letters of super are S, P, and R. This has to be spreads, I'm sure. Wide magazine features, because that they would be super wide magazine features spreads. I guess S, P, reads must be how it's working. Um, very nice. Maybe SP is an abbreviation for super, as sort of an alternation of that. Now, 15 across. Battle involving a pair of teams and a swimming pool. That is really clever. This is water polo. And I think what we're looking at here is war involving a pair of letters from teams. So you get water. And the swimming pool is the letters of pool swimming around to give polo. 21 across. One who throws back without reservation. Hmm, I don't know who throws back without reservation. T oh, tosser. <laughs> okay, um, a tosser could be someone who throws something, as well as a rude word here. And if you take off res, having turned it backwards, you get Sot, who is somebody who throws back the drink without any reservation at all. Made with needle points, that's lovely. Sewn, that's lovely in two ways. That's a really clever clue because sewn is a perfectly good definition of made with needle points, um, but the needle in the wordplay case is a compass needle, and the points that a compass needle can point to are south, east, west, and north, making sewn. That's brilliant. Opposite of wants to see more of. Well, it looks like dismisses, which is 
perfectly good as a definition. Um, oh, I see. So dis as a uh, reversal in a kind of negation indicator in language, and misses is wants to see more of. Crikey, that's clever. 26 down. One end of state, that looks like S, with Orange County and heading north Los Angeles. So that's SoCal, Southern California, which is one end of that state, which has Orange County and Los Angeles. Uh, presumably LA is slightly north of Orange County. And you put together S and OC for Orange County and LA heading north, you get SoCal, 32. A small bit of hair on the edge of lid. This is lash, yes, A, S for small, bit of hair is H, on the edge of lid is L, and you get lash, which is a small bit of hair on the edge of your eyelid. So it does look like candle lit still, why, why, why? Like some dinners reportedly. L oh, le lit is meaning the bed. Canned. Your dinner could be canned if it was tinned food, I suppose, uh, leading to le lit. Very clever. Um, ooh, thin mints? Would Girl Scouts sell thin mints? I guess they might. Things, okay, so things without GS, which is the heads of Girl Scouts. So that gives you thin. And big money makers are obviously mints, make money literally. It's very nice. So it wasn't the uh, money makers meaning um, backsides that I was wondering about. 24, bottom part of shank, that's K, which fits fine at the beginning of this. Connected to one end of heel and one end of bridge. Ooh, and I'm wondering if I don't know this word. So, null. It must be, I mean, obviously from the definition, it's some lower leg bone. Oh, ankle. Oh, so the bottom part of shank is the last three letters of it. Of course, it's a leg bone that's connected to the heel and the end of the bridge. I'm sure you thought of that quicker than I did. Look at that, though. That is... A puzzle entirely composed of and lit clues. I mean, literally every one of those is excellent and amusing and gives you a kind of endorphin hit when you solve it. It's so brilliantly put together. Now, it does remind me of a puzzle that um, I wrote for the Magpie magazine, um, which I suppose these days you'd call an uh, subscription blog in a way um, about 10 or 15 years ago probably 15 years ago maybe maybe back when Simon was part of the magazine um, and yeah I think what I might do is send Simon the puzzle and maybe we'll tack it on to this video see how see how he gets on with that because It'll be interesting after watching this, I think, to you. So if that works out, you'll see Simon in a few seconds. If it doesn't, bye for now. Um, and uh, let's see what happens. Brilliant puzzle, though, by Will Nediger. Congratulations to him. Thanks to June Park for sending it. I'll see you later. Hello and welcome to a crossword edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I'm not sure if this is going to form part of a larger video, but Mark has asked me to solve a puzzle that he created back in 2005, I think. Um, so that is a very long time ago. And this was made for the Magpie magazine, which is a magazine that Mark and I founded uh, back in the day uh, to specialize in sort of advanced cryptic crosswords. Um, now, Mark tells me that this was an A-graded puzzle. Now, the rating system in the Magpie, you'll be probably pleased to hear, uh, A was the easiest puzzle. And that basically means that this puzzle should correspond to something like a times crossword. Um, in fact, I just need to, I've just spotted that I need to move that across a bit. Otherwise, we're going to have an issue with the down clues. There we go. That's better. That looks like everything is now inside the box. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and solve this puzzle. Um, now, obviously, 
as this was created by Mark, some of you may not be familiar. Some of you may not know Mark's backstory in crosswords. He is the best cryptic crossword solver that ever lived. Um, he also happens to be a very, very good setter of cryptic crosswords. Um, and yeah, I've always enjoyed his puzzles. So hopefully I will enjoy this one. Let's have a look. One across. Uh, let's highlight that. King getting in dead trouble with wife. Okay. King getting in dead trouble with wife. Well, it looks like Edward to me because I think this is an and lit clue, which means uh, that the whole clue does double duty. A whole clue has to act as definition and the whole clue has to act as wordplay. Now, if we think about how this might work then from a wordplay perspective purely, King is very often, well, it's either an abbreviation for K from the chess notation or it tends to be R for Rex, which is Latin for King. So dead trouble, that's telling me it's an anagram of the word dead. And W is very often an abbreviation for wife. And I can basically see in my head that if I scramble up dead R and W, I'm going to get Edward, which was certainly the name of a English king. And I wonder, I don't know. I mean, there are a number of uh, possibilities that we've had eight kings called Edward in, in Britain, but this might be a reference to Wallace Simpson um, because Edward VIII did get into trouble. Uh, with his wife and then and that resulted in his abdication so uh, every British schoolboy is uh, will be aware of the rhyme hark the herald angels sing Wallace Simpson stole our king um, so this might be a reference to Edward VIII but it's a beautiful clue anyway and let's let's carry on maybe I'll use the letters because Mark's crosswords are never easy here is their conflict within surfaces I have no idea what that's talking about. Let's look at this one. Three down, where you can regularly see the infant in analysis session. Beginning with A. Uh, no, I don't know what that is either. Four down, fall in value, gas investor expected to begin, fall in value, gas investor expected to begin with. Fall in value, depreciation, I uh, well, don't know. That's not easy either. Let's, I think I'm going to have to go straight across. To, let's go to five across. Difficulty with runs in Central America. It's uh, an evocative clue. Um, Central America. That could be indicating the central letters of the word America in Central America suggests that it would have to be more than one of those letters and the middle letters are not very useful. I don't know what that is either actually. Nine across. Crusoe's first as model, one with established routine. No, this is not going very well. Ten across. Fraction of division in thirds. Oh, well, this is an easier clue. OK, so fraction. Uh, and this is another analyt because uh, this is quite interesting. Fraction of division in thirds. If we take a fraction of the string of letters division in thirds, you can see hidden inside is the word ninth, which actually could be defined as a fraction of a division in thirds because that's rather nice, isn't it? A third of a third, of course, is a ninth. So that is another and lit clue and rather a clever one. Um, now that gives us some some letters. Let's try and use them. Six to M-I-I-N-N-D or Cal, obviously all state abbreviations in the US, i.e. all over the place. Well, this is an anagram and this is another and lit. OK, so it's an anagram, 15 letters, so it looks like six, eight. Yeah, OK, so it's an anagram of everything in this clue up to the end of the IE. And all over the place is telling us that we need to uh, mix those letters up. And the whole thing has to mean two, two states all over the place. I can see direction in there. Direction. 
directional maybe omni omnidirectional yeah that looks nice doesn't it omnidirectional would be all over the place now i'm going to try and make this software work now hopefully it will okay yeah that's working good omnidirection oh yes okay well now we're getting some more letters this should become easier now godforsaken nuisance to some oh okay well this is another hidden god for it and it's another unlit godforsaken nuisance to some extent well if we take the string of letters godforsaken nuisance and take some extent of those letters you can see hidden in there is the word ennui um which i guess is a godforsaken nuisance it's you know ennui is a sort of bored state isn't it um rancid toe of the last that looks like an anagram eight four yes it is it's going to be an anagram of toe of the last and it's another and lit so perhaps all the clues are and lits um this crossword by the way was called two down which is this one here is their here is their conflict within surfaces and there will be some sort of theme to this puzzle that's one of the things the magpie puzzles specialize in is that you know it won't just be solve the puzzle and that's the end of it and there will be something going on in this grid um so anyway let's try and think about this an anagram ah okay so this this answer is athlete's foot now i haven't quite understood the definition yet but let's put athlete's foot in because i can see that that is an anagram of those letters okay so i think the last is referring to the last person in the race so if you came last in the race um it might be because you had a rancid toe because of your athlete's foot so another evocative clue quite charming oh this one looks interesting now five across so we've got difficulty with runs in central ah cholera very as uh, another it is another analyst so all the clues are going to be analysts that's what i think is going on here difficulty if you're in a difficulty you're in a hole and you can see if you put hole with um r for runs that's a cricket abbreviation in ca which must be a valid abbreviation for central america uh you get cholera which of course could be a difficulty with runs in a different sense um five down more than one island so if we read this as an and lit, we need this word to mean more than one island. So a group of islands, Canaries, Canary, Cayman, Cayman is the answer. And why is it the answer? Well, it's clever wordplay because more than one island. Well, the word K is a word for an island. And of course, the Isle of Man is an island. So you put two islands together, more than one island, and you get the group of the Cayman Islands. Very nice. So let's look at 13 across. In which end is t in which end is tap turned to contain pressure? Okay, well I can see that's an anagram of end is tap with P for pressure in the middle of it. So it's standpipe. That's a very clever clue, actually. That is very clever because I think a standpipe is exactly that, isn't it? Isn't it something where you turn a tap to contain the pressure of a pipe? So that's remarkable. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it does, what it says on the tin, and it is, and the and the whole thing does operate as wordplay. Very clever. Um, 15 across let rip with such a flutter triple okay this is an anagram if you were to flutter the letters let rip if you were to bat them about i.e anagram them you can create a tri the word triple which of course is a type of bet you might bet on a triple if you were having a flutter um, that is another very clever clue 16 down what does contra pill almost produce okay well that looks like that looks like another anagram but this time not of contra pill but contra pil the word almost there is saying take almost all of the letters 
Now, can I get the anagram here? It's going to be... And the whole thing is going to have to mean what does contrapill almost produce? Contrapill. I don't know what a contrapill is. I think I might have to come back to that one. 19 across. Give notice of staff's finish. Ah, oh, so that is a brilliant clue. Full stop. That is a brilliant clue. So the answer here, I think, is clock off. And let's think about why it's clock off. Um, if you give notice of staff's finish, that is the definition of clocking off. That's how you used to clock off in a factory. You used to uh, go past the clock and, um, and basically that would mean your working day was done. Now, if you give notice of something, you clock it. Of is plain, it's just this O and this F, the word of. Staff's finish is the finish of the word staff, the F, and that's that F there. You put all that together, you get clock off, which the whole clue means, which is, uh, it's just beautiful, it's a beautiful clue. Uh, 17 down, what's one private bachelor featured in magazine? What's one private bachelor? Bachelor can, is normally B or BA. Featured in magazine. Magazine is normally time, uh, which won't work here because there aren't many words beginning TL. Uh, oh, let's look at this one. This has got I and O in it. 23 across. I'm adult in perfect condition. Uh, this is going to be imago, which is a type, is a form of an insect when it's an adult. So um, I can see how the whole clue would define. Oh no, where's my crossword gone? Come back. Um, Ah, okay. I'm is plain text. I am. Adult can be abbreviated for A. If something is in perfect condition, it's go. Uh, if you said something was good to go, it would be ready. It would be in perfect condition. So imago is how uh, is built up from those wordplay elements. And uh, imago is, I say, an adult form of an insect, I think. Um, right, we're running out of good letters here. Or let's... Let's try 25. One found in Beirut, possibly. Okay, well, possibly here is very suggestive in an anagram of the word Beirut. Now, one, obviously, one is normally either I, from the Roman numeral for the number one, or A. If you were to say one bird, you could say a bird instead. Now, the problem is that one, or oh, the letter I, plus Beirut is only seven letters, so let's try am instead. Um, urbanite. Urbanite is somebody from Beirut. Beirut is a city, so I think that's urbanite. Um, and let's let's see if it works. Yeah, you can see you it's the word an for one inside an anagram of Beirut. Uh, let's go like that. Uh, let's come back to this then. So 16 down. What? Oh, this is the anagram of contrapill. So it's pro something. Pro, prolactic? Pro. Pro. What is it? I don't know. It's pro something. <laughs> um. Contrapill almost. I've got to put an N in this. Prolactin? Is that a thing? Prolactin. That does ring a vague bell. I'm going to go for that. Prolactin. I'm not sure what it is though. So um, you might have to look that up at the end um, to understand why that is an anlit. What does contrapill almost produce? Pill is a contraceptive. So look, ah, what does contraceptive pill almost produce? Is prolactin something that is produced by the contraceptive pill? Uh, that could be true. Uh, that's very clever, if so. Um, Twenty-seven across. Where are Londoners first elected? In an example. Where are Londoners first 
Well, A, Londoners first will be the letter L. Ah, okay, yeah, it's Ealing. Ealing is a borough of London. And therefore, it might be somewhere you could get elected um, as an MP. So what we've got here is A, L. So the A is plain. The L is the first letter of Londoner. If you're elected, you're in. You're in power. Um, in an example, an example is an EG. So again, it's an andlet. Very clever. 17 down. Oh, this is the one about the bachelor. Eligible. You get an eligible bachelor. Why is that eligible? Oh, God, my crossword's gone again. Um, why is that elig eligible? What's one private? Oh, one private. A private. In the US, a GI is a soldier, and that's a private. B for bachelor. So what? Yeah, one is the I, G I for the private, B for the bachelor. It's all in the middle of L, the magazine L, not time. That is a very clever clue as well. And what is a private bachelor featured in magazine? He may well be eligible, which is why there's a question mark at the end. Brilliant. Um, right, this probably ends in ing, doesn't it? Twenty one across. Ah, oh, this will. Ah, oh, this is an anagram. Initially, like thin girl, vibrant. So it's an anagram of L for the initial letter of the word like plus thin plus girl and it vibrant is telling us to anagram those letters. And if you're initially like a thin girl and vibrant, you are ending in ing thrill, thrilling. Thrilling is what you might be. So that looks good, doesn't it? So thrilling. Oh, not thrilling, thrilling. Let's put the G back in. Doing this basically in the dark, so apologies. Um, 20 down. Make notes about gist briefly. Make note minute. That's for making notes, isn't it? Ah, make notes about gist briefly. So the whole thing means to minute. Make, ah, that's very clever. It's very clever again. I keep saying that, but it is very clever. To actually construct a whole puzzle out of and lit is just amazingly clever. So make notes about gist. We've got notes, uh, do, re, mi, fo, fa, so, la, ti, do. How do you spell those notes? Well, mi is spelled M-I like this. T is spelled T-E. So these are notes in music about gist briefly. Well, if you get to the nub of something, N-U-B, you would, you would find the gist of it. And gist briefly, therefore, tells us to take the last letter out of the word nub. And we get put that inside, we get minute. We get a very useless E at the end of 26 across. Mass we extracted from caramel sweets somehow. Okay, well, this is an anagram, or oh, it's a subtraction and then an anagram. We need to remove the letters of mass and we from the letters of caramel sweets and then anagram the rest of it to create something that you might extract from treacle it looks like doesn't it yeah that looks like treacle i'm going to go with that a c l e ah we get a c at the end of that three down one what was that about where you can regularly see the infant in analysis session what don't know 22 down, a river. Ah, it's going to be the Rhine or the Rhone. River headwaters beginning. That's giving us the H. Uh, still doesn't tell us whether it's the Rhine or the Rhone. Beginning in the heart of... Oh, headwaters beginning is H. In, uh, in will be plain. And then the heart of the word Switzerland, the middle letter of the word Switzerland, is, I think, E. So... Yes, it is. So Rhine is the answer there. And of course, uh, the Rhine does start in Switzerland. Very clever again. One's lacrimation caused by such each smartly concealed in such way. This is a, this is another impressive anagram. Look, one's lacrimation. I'm not actually sure I can do it in my head, but it's going to be the letters of one's lacrimation, removing the letters of 
each smartly, I think. And if you anagram what's left, you can create something that means this. One's lacrimation caused by such. Uh, sorry, this might take me a second or two. Um, 12, 16, 12, 7. Onion. Onion, I think I can get left with there. And lacrim oh yeah, and of course when you cut onions up, you do get lacrimation. Lacrimation means crying. So, uh, there we go, we get onion. Let's have a look at 11 down. Rowboat, I turn around. Well, that's an anagram of rowboat, I turn. Around is saying, shuffle the letters around. Oh, look, look what it ends in. We actually... Trout, rainbow trout, rainbow trout, and a rowboat I turn around. Okay, so this is what Mark's doing here. He's, he's, he's saying, he's imagining he's a rainbow trout going along the river, and he's like going, whoa, there's a rowboat, I turn around. Um, <laughs> nice, a uh, rainbow trout. There we go, and we get loads of good letters here, 12 across. One sort of growth, oh, one will be A, we need a sort of growth here, four letters, and the whole thing will mean another sort of growth, and don't know what it is, 14 across. C, changing direction, minimally exercising fish. What? No clue. 18 across. What could be round us? Ah, oozles. What could be round us? Round, what could be, uh, a round is a round letter, that's O. Us is plain text. Wings, you sometimes see this in cryptic crossword, the wings of a building, L's. Uh, and oozles, of course, are birds. And what could be round us with w wings? What could be flapping round us with wings? They would be oozles. Oh, no, we must. Oh no, this, this, is, this, this is the break, this ends in L. Where you can regularly see the infant in analysis session. Something clinic. Antenatal clinic. Antenatal clinic, is that right? Where you can regularly... Let me put it in. Let me put it in and just then I can stare at it more easily. Antenatal clinic. Antenatal clinic. So, how does this work? Where you can regularly see the infant. Ah, right, okay, I think I do understand this. If you take the regular letters out of the an infant, you get T E N A T. So that's taking the odd numbered letters out of the phrase, the infant. Now that's all in the middle of anal, A-N-A-L, which is an abbreviation for analysis, and a session is a clinic. So an, an antenatal clinic is where you might well see an infant for an analysis session. Wow, okay, uh, sort of an unborn infant in that particular case. Oh, so now we've got one sort. Acorn is a sort of growth, isn't it? And a and corn is a different sort. A corn on your foot is a sort of growth, <laughs> and an acorn is a different sort of growth on an oak tree, obviously. Um, ah, now four. Ah, we get a T as the second letter, uh, st second starting letter, starting letter of the second word. C changing diary. Neap tide would fit. Minimally exercising fish it is neat <laughs> okay this is um so i think what mark's saying with the definition here is we have to read this whole clue as the definition is that in a neap tide um you know the sea doesn't move very much when the tides are neap so the fish wouldn't get very well exercised unlike in a spring tide now, how does the wordplay work? C changing direction is saying, saying take the word C and change the direction of the south part of it to the north part of it. And that gives us an N-E-A, 
minimally exercising well pt is physical training it's an abbreviation for physical training so if you were to express exercising minimally you would put pt and a fish one of the short fish that come up often in crosswords is the eyed neap tide is how that therefore so this one looks like I'm not actually sure what that one looks like, but it's something. Fordham. Uh, fall in value gas investor expected to be fall in value gas investor expected to begin with. It looks like downside. Oh, this this. Yeah, OK, I think I do understand this, but this is going to be absolutely impossible unless you are of a certain age and you remember some adverts on television when British gas was privatized in in the UK, I think that were adverts that they either said don't tell Sid or do tell Sid, but Sid is a gas investor. Expected to begin with is the letter E, it's the beginning letter of the word expected. So that's how side is coming out. Fall in value is a down, right? So fall in value gas investor expected to begin with is a downside it's a general description of downside and i think that's why there's a question mark at the end that is a bit of a stretch that one and actually almost unsolvable if you don't watch british tv in around 2005. um nine across Cru oh this is going to be castaway isn't it so crusoe's first as a model one with established routine crusoe's first is c as will just be as probably a model is a model t ford so that's just the letter t one is an a an established routine is a way so put all that together you get cast away and crusoe was you know crusoe was a i suppose the probably the most famous castaway um in history perhaps um so he was the first as a model and he, maybe he had an established routine. Um, but Castaway looks right. So we're just left with this one. Oh, and this this is the two down that that is the theme of the puzzle. Oh. OK, here is their conflict within surfaces. Here is their conflict within surfaces. Well, I can only think of one word that fits here, but I don't quite understand the answer. I can. I think this might be the word diagonals because it fits. I know that's not a very good reason, but let us put it in and then see if we can work out why it might be this. Um, diagonals. So we've got here is their conflict within surfaces. Agon is an old word for a conflict or a war. And that's in dials. Dials, are they surfaces? I suppose they are. So here is their conflict within. Why is diagonals defined by this clue? Here is their con. Oh, is it the diagonals in the puzzle? Oh, yes, it is. This is lovely. OK, so let's actually I'm going to highlight some cells now. This is very clever indeed. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Apologies for that. Um, it's very late here. And I have had a gin and tonic. Um, but let me highlight those letters in. Can I do this? Properties. Uh, appearance. Background color. Or maybe I have to do foreground color then. I don't know. What do I have to do? OK. Yeah, there you go. And you can see spelt out along these diagonals and lit and lit and here so mark's saying in the diagonals is where you'll find conflict within the surfaces because you'll find you know conflict in trying to figure out um uh you know the, the surface meaning of the clue if you like um in all of these and lits it's, it's just beautiful it's a beautiful execution um very clever puzzle indeed so i hope that makes sense to everybody i've sort of run through that well i tried to do it reasonably quickly it's still taken me half an hour but 
Um, as I say, um, certainly not a simple puzzle. And although there were a number of anagrams in here, they, were, they weren't straightforward, at least not for me. So thank you for watching. And of course, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.